And the author, Sheikh Abdurrahman ibn Nasir al-Si'li, rahimahullah, he said um, in the 16th line, وَلَيْسَ وَاجِبٌ بِلَقْتِدَارِ وَلَا مُحَرَّمٌ مَعَ الضِّرَارِ The author in these two shatr, he gives us two qa'ida that are very important and that are great principles. Qa'ida al ula, the first qa'ida he gives us is وَلَيْسَ وَاجِبٌ بِلَقْتِدَارِ Which basically means أن الواجبات تُسْقِطُ تَسْقُطُ مَعْ عَدَمِ الْقُدْرَةِ That the wajibat, it's dropped from your shoulders when there is no ability. Something that was wajib, that was obligatory on you, because you now don't have the ability for it, the sharia came and it uplifted it from your shoulders. The, 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 the bait sorry, of the shaykh is saying, وَلَيْسَ وَاجِبٌ بِلَقْتِدَارِ اقْتِدَارِ means what? قُدْرَة Ability. What does قُدْرَة mean? It means istita'a, ability. And as you're all aware of, antum ta'rifun al-firaq, the deviated sects, the groups that are out there, especially two views, two views of the firaq, or two particular groups, what they believe of the matter pertaining to al-istita'a, ability. For example, from the groups are those who say that qudra is, um, ability is, um, it is the prior to the action. Ability is what is prior to the action. Only. It is some, ability means something prior to the action. That's it. And that is the blue, blue that is the view of the, that is the view of the Mu'tazila, a deviated sect. And the second view is uh, those who say that the qudra is what? The qudra is al murafiq al murafiqatu lil amal. It is that which is uh, with the action. Ability is referred to what is taking place whilst the action is going on. Ability is what's with it. Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, when they define what qudra and ability mean, they say that al qudra wal istita'a bil ma'anayayni, two of the meanings. Which two meanings? The, both of the views that are mentioned by the by the Mu'tazila and the Asha'ira together is what Ahlul Sunnah believe. So what do, what do they say? The Ahlul Sunnah say Al Istita'a is what? Ma kana qabla al fi'li wa ma kana athna al fi'li. Ahlul Sunnah say what? Ability is that which is prior to the action and that which is with the actions. Good. Um, but they also differ with the Mu'tazila in the statements that they say. Even that though they said, it is prior to the action, they also still differ with them in that statement as well. What is it? Um, the Mu'tazila in the first meaning, which is that it's prior to the action, they believe that the ability is prior to the action and it's specific for the Mukallaf, the one who's been burdened, the creation. And that it's not ascribed to the Sharia. That this matter, it is not ascribed to the Sharia. Bikhilafi Ahlul Sunnah. Whereas Ahlul Sunnah don't believe that. Ahlul Sunnah believe that the ability is not specific to the action of the Mukallaf. And it is ascribed to the Sharia. Naam. Walaysa wajibun bil akhtidari. And wajib, what does it mean? Wajib is huwa al fi'lu ladi talabahu shari'u mutlaqan talaban jazima. Wajib is what? It is the action in which the Sharia requests from you in a forceful manner. It asks you to do it. So the meaning of this Qa'ida, the first Qa'ida, because I said he mentioned two, is the one who doesn't have the ability of a particular action from the actions, the obligation is uplifted from him. And the evidence for that is in Surah Al-Taghabun, Ayah 16. Allah says, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ فِيَا Allah." مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ as much as you're able to. And also the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ If I order you a matter, come with it, that which is according to your ability. Now we have to realize something, which is what? The types of ability. It differs in comparison or in, in 
in relation to the obligation. Abilities differ when looked into in relation to the obligation. Abilities differ. For example, the obligations are, some types of the obligations are what? Those which are badaniya. They are something you physically have to come with. You have to come with. And it's connected to what? To your body. Lack of habit, not having the ability for the actions which are obligatory. So pay attention. As I said, the wajibat are different types. So the abilities are also going to be different types. When you look at it in terms of the obligation it's connected to. For example, there are wajibat which are connected to the person's body. It's a physical thing that a person has to do. So for example, if a person doesn't have the ability of an action which is physical, he doesn't have the ability. Um, because a part of that body may not be something you have. The person may not have the body part for that particular what? For that particular actions. For example, washing your hands in wudu is what? It's an obligatory act. The person may not have their hand. His hand might be cut off. At that particular point, he is not able to wash his hand. And he can't do it. So here what we say is that the obligation is uplifted from him. Very good. Also what could possibly happen as well is that the individual, this action, which is a physical action, he doesn't have the ability on a particular portion of the action. For example, the one who is sitting who is unable to stand for the prayer. He can't stand up. And there are some obligations which are connected to the people's wealth. It's connected to the wajibat al-maliyah. It is connected to your finance. The person is unable to pay what? Uh, he's unable to find his wealth, for example. Or, لِعَدَمِ الْقُدْرَةِ عَلَى التَّصَرُّفِ فِيهِ Or he's unable to do what he wills from the wealth. For example, hajj. The person doesn't have a provision to get to hajj. Then obligation of hajj is uplifted from him. There are also wajibat which are verbal wajibat. The person is, for example, he can't speak at all. He's unable to speak, he's abkam, he's mute. He, he can't speak. All of these, as I said to you all, there are wajibat, the abilities pertaining to it is as I just mentioned. So those t three types that I mentioned, which are those which are badaniya, those which are maliya, and those which are qawliya. The scholars, they divided them into two types. Those three that I just mentioned, the scholars, they categorize them into two types. Some which have an exchange, they have a badal. Something else can go in its place. For example, a person is unable to what? He's unable to use water. He can't do wudu. Is there something else that can take its place? Yes, tayammum. There is a what? There is a iwad. There is a badal. Something that can take the place. From them are those which are what? وَمِنْهَا مَا إِذَا سَقَطَ لَا يَكُونُ لَهُ بدل. And there are some wajibat that if they're taken off your shoulder, there is nothing else to take its position. Such as hajj. The person, if the hajj is lifted from him, because he's unable to do so, then there is no medal for it. There's not something else that he has to do. So here is a qa'idah muhimma that the scholars discuss, which is what? Halil ajz. Um, and when you're unable to do something. Lack of ability to, for a matter. Or particular wajibat. Does it uplift it from your shoulders? For example, this wajib, you can do part of it, but you can't do the other part. Does it uplift it from your shoulders? Just because you can't do some of it. This, the scholars, they say, it can, it can only be answered based on the type of wajibat that you're speaking about. يَخْتَلِفُ بِاخْتِلَافِ الْوَاجِبَاتِ فَإِنَّ الْوَاجِبَاتِ عَلَى نَوْعَيْنِ The wajibat are of two types. Wajibat لَا تَتَبَعَّبْ Wajibat that cannot be broken into two parts. And it's what? We're here, جُزْءٌ وَاحِدٌ It's one portion. It's either there or it's missing. For example, a person is not able to give a sa'a of fitr. 
Zakatul Fitr, he can't give the Sa'a, the portion that is appointed by the Sharia, he can't give it. What happens here? Sakata, Sakata Al Jamia. The whole ruling is uplifted from him. Naam. Um, very good. The second type is what? Wajibat tabaad. وَلَيْسَ بَعْضُهَا مُرْتَبِطًا بِالْآخَرِينَ Wajibat which can be broken up and they're not connected to each other necessarily. For example, a person he is unable to fully cover all of his aura. He can only cover some of his aura. He covers what he can. He covers what he can. And the rest he leaves it with Allah, with Allah wa ta'ala. The ruling is lifted from him. And the ulama refer to that second type as what? Al-Maysuru. لا يسقط المعصورة نعم There is a third type which is called as dispute وهناك واجبات تتردد بين الأمرين واجب which the scholars are in dispute Is it لا تتبعض أو تتبعض Is it واجبات that are that can be broken into parts or is it واجب which is stuck together There is that dispute amongst this one um, And the scholars dispute one another An example of that is wudu it's wudu. A person is unable to wash all of his body. Is it permissible for him to do what? To use some of his part of his body, water, and another part finish it off with tayammum? Just to do the tayammum? Can that, is that permissible? Or is the whole water uplifted from him? Or is what? The whole water uplifted from him and he just does tayammum. So based on whatever the person says, if he says يتبعض, then the ruling changes. And if he says لا يتبعض, then the ruling changes based on what he said. That's the first qa'ida that the author rahimahullah mentions in that line. The second one is, he says rahimahullah ta'ala, he says وَلَا مُحَرَّمٌ مَعَ الضِّرَارِ Which is the qa'ida thaniya, a second qa'ida. Which is there is no haram when there is a necessity. لا محرم, there is no haram مَعَ الضِّرَارِ when there is a necessity. And a lot of the fuqaha, they say it this way. They say, الضرورات تبيح المحظورات. That the necessity permits the impermissible. Necessity allows what? The impermissible. Um, oh, ضرر يزالو. Oh, لا ضرر ولا ضرار. This is where it falls under. So anything that a person is basically in a state of necessity, that thing is not haram anymore. It becomes what? It becomes halal for the person. The person is allowed to. He is permitted. He is allowed to use that thing. But we have to understand some points, inshallah ta'ala. What does muharram mean? Muharram is, uh, it is a fi'il that the sharia requested for you to leave off in a forceful manner. In a forceful manner. What does the darura mean? Darura is very important that it's understood properly. Darura is, it means ma yalhaq al abda dararun bitarki bihaythu la yaqum ghayruhu maqamah. It is the person, the individual, harm will afflict him. Harm will afflict him by leaving off. Yalhaq al abdu dararun bitarki if he leaves off this thing, if he doesn't take it and use it. Harm will afflict him, and also there is no um, iwad. There is nothing else that can stand in that thing in which he wants. There is nothing that can take that thing's place. That is the correct meaning of what darura means. Um, <coughs> a harm will take place. So many people, they confuse it with haja. Hajjah is different from a darura and we will give the definition of Hajjah as well. And we will give an example of both. Hajjah is different from darura. Hajjah means what? مَا يَلْحَقُ الْمُكَلَّفُ الضَّرَارُونَ The person harm will take, happen to him if he leaves off. But, لَكِنْ قَدْ يَقُومُ غَيْرُهُ مَقَامًا But something else can take its place. He can find an alternative. I give you an example of darura and I give you an example of Hajjah. A darura, for example, is if a person he needs to eat food. He's mudarran lil akl. He has to eat. And he can't find except a dead animal. 
For example, if now he leaves this animal and he doesn't eat this corpse, what will happen? Death or harm. Not death on death is not necessarily a condition. It doesn't have to be death. But what will happen? The person is going to have a harm. It's going to harm him. And he has no other alternative. This is called what? This is called a barar. It's called a barar. Because he has وَلَا يَقُمْ غَيْرُهُ مَقَامَهُ إِلَّا يَجْدِ إِلَّا الْمَيْتَةَ And he can't, find any, he, can't, he can't find anything except this corpse. Haja is like what? Haja is... Um, an example is what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. What did the Prophet do? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of his vessels broke. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of his vessels, what? They broke. And when they broke, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he placed in it what? He placed inside it a fitba, silver. He put it inside there. The Messenger Alaihi Salatu uh, At this particular point, the Prophet putting the fiddah there was their alternatives. Ha! Huh. When the Prophet's vessel broke and he took and he placed a fiddah in there, this is called haja. There was other alternatives. So the qa'ida is Necessity permits impermissible thing Necessity allows and permits for you something that is impermissible, unrestricted. No if no buts. And of course, if the conditions are met, and it is a darura, no doubt. Lakin al mahbu al haja. Something if it's a haja, la tubihu al mahadur, a haja, a need, doesn't necessitate something that's haram from you, illa ida wara da mahadalilu, unless the evidence permits it. You need evidence for it. Good. That is very what? Important. Where's the evidence for this qa'idah that the Shaykh mentioned, which is al mahdurati to be al darura to be al mahdurat? Where's the evidence for that? Adadu min al nusus al sharia. There are a lot of texts that permit it or that are evidence for it. Qawluhu ta'ala, the statement of Allah, فَمَنِ الضُّرَّ غَيْرَ بَاغٍ وَلَا عَادٍ فَلَا إِسْمَ عَلَيْهِ Surah Al Baqarah, Ayah 173. Also the statement of Allah, وَقَدْ فَصَّلَ لَكُمْ مَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِلَّا مَضْضُرِرْتُمْ إِلَيْهِ Surah Al-An'am, Ayah 119. So, the first ayah, when Allah says, فَمَنِ الضُّرَّ Anyone who is given, or he's in a state of barar, he's just in a state of necessity. And we speak about what the word means, غَيْرَ بَاغٍ We're going to elaborate on that point, inshaAllah ta'ala, in which Allah tabarakat ta'ala says. Later, good. وَلَا عَادٍ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ There is no harm on that person. The first ayah is what? It's, it's specific to food. The first ayah. But the second ayah, it seems apparent that it's عَام وَقَدْ فَصَلْ لَكُمْ مَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِلَّا مَضْضُرِرْتُمْ إِلَّا مَضْضُرِرْتُمْ إِلَيْهِ That ayah seems عَام it, means, it seems very general. But the first one can be used only for food. But the second one seems what? And the second one seems ظَاهِرُهَا عَامٌ نعم um, Examples for this qa'idah is important that we take it. And we just mentioned one which is أَكْلُ اللَّحْمِ الْمَيْتَةِ Eating the flesh and the meat of a dead animal. ضرورة. But I have to elaborate a condition that the scholars, they stipulate for this qa'idah. And it's obligatory on us and we should observe these conditions. Because some of the people, they make and they water down the ahkam of the sharia. They water it down. And they don't observe the, these conditions. From these conditions are, number one, أَن تَكُونَ الضَّرُورَةُ تَنْدَفِعُ بِفِعْلِ الْمَحْضُورِ Doing this action, this, doing this action, which is haram, will remove and get rid of the necessity that you're in. So you, you get away from the harm that you're... It would, it would work. Ah. If it isn't gonna, then it's not permissible to do this haram. For example, um, a person can't find nothing to drink huh, except what? Except a khamr. He can only find alcohol to drink. 
it is not permissible for him to drink the khamar. And he's in a state of necessity. He's not allowed to drink it unless what? Unless that this alcohol will remove the thing that's in your throat that's about to kill you. It should be able to work. Huh? It should be something we believe that it's going to move it. Is it going to move it? Yes, it's liquid. It runs down it. Good, it will work. But a person says, I'm in a state of necessity. And I'm going to take drugs. In the middle of the desert. Huh? Is that going to move this? La, la yajus. So it has to be something that what? It has to be something that we know can remove the harm. With that being said, what also falls under the first point is that we don't also find another part, a means. If we can find another way to remove it, and we're able to do it, well then we're not allowed to. For example, a person can find a male and a female doctor, and she's a female, Muslim female woman. She can find a male doctor and a female doctor. She can. Who does she choose? She, feels, she, she chooses the female what? The female doctor. Because she has the uh, option of choosing. The second one is That the necessity has to be higher than the sin. Meaning the sin has to be less, very small in comparison to your necessity. Because if this person is about to die and eating, the eating is less. In comparison to a Muslim person's life is, is going. Wadah? No. Now, example would be of a darura that the mahdur is higher. The sin is higher than the necessity. Which is what? If a person tells you, kill this person or I'll kill you. Kill this person or I will kill you. Now, here it is not permissible. He can't kill other than himself. That also point that has to be realized is that, um, which is this one, is that if the necessity, the haram that you were permitted under this situation of necessity, if you've, you're not out of it. In the sense where you're not in a position where you need to eat this food anymore. You've either come to the city you wanted to get to, or somebody's offered you something. Then you're not allowed to still carry on eating this animal, which is was permitted for you under what? Under darura. Naam. But this qaida. We're going to come to it, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, the Sheikh is going to bring it in the next line, in more details. The third one, inshallah ta'ala, is that the necessity has to be something that is known. It has to be true, like the necessity has to be something mutayaqan. It is certainly that your necessary necessity. Because a person is not allowed to make permissible something for themselves based that they think. That there's, there's a necessity, I think this is necessary, I think this is a necessity. It has to be a necessity, it has to be known. It can't be, mm, I don't know, maybe we have, le. it has to be what? Good. Also, some of the ulama, they divide the necessity into two types. They say there are, ma, there are necessity which are mu'akkatan. It's for a duration. And there are those which are not du uh, to a particular duration, it's forever. And the one they say that it's a necessity which is forever is marriage. They say marriage is a necessity, but that isn't the case. The fuqaha, the usulin, they say that as an example. Like it doesn't seem like that example is, is correct. Why? Because um, zawaj, marriage is not darura. What is it? It's a manfa'a. There's a difference between manfa'a and a darar. So it's not a harm, it's a manfa'a, it's a benefit. The author, he then says after that, on the 17th line, وَكُلُّ مَحْضُورٍ مَعَ الضَّرُورَ بِقَدْرِ مَا تَحْتَاجُهُ الضَّرُورَ This bait is one of the conditions that we just mentioned for the previous bait. It's one of these conditions. Uh, it was, we mentioned it under the second condition, right? 
which is that the person he should not use or utilize a haram which is a, a, a be above the necessity and the need somebody is just he's got he's actually he's actually uh, gained his need so he drank the alcohol he removed what was in his throat he can't just keep drinking it and carry on drinking it and drinking it and drinking it لا. وَكُلُّ مَحْضُورٍ مَعَضَّرُورًا Every haram is connected to the necessity. بِقَدْرِ And it's leveled and it's weighed with what? بِقَدْرِ مَا تَحْتَاجُهُ الضَّرُورًا it's, it's according to your necessity. Once the necessity is removed and you don't need it anymore, it becomes haram. The original ruling comes back again. And that is what Allah Taala said in the ayah when he permitted it. In Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 173, what did Allah say? فَمَنِ الضُّرَّ غَيْرَ بَاغٍ وَلَا عَادٍ Allah conditioned what? عَدَمُ الْبَغِي عَدَمُ الْعُدْوَانِ عَدَمُ الْبَغِي عَدَمُ الْعُدْوَانِ means what? أَزْيَادَةُ فِي الْمِقْدَارِ That you don't exceed your limits. You're allowed, the ayah is saying to you, فَمَنِ الضُّرَّ غَيْرَ بَاغٍ The person who is put in a situation where he is in a state of necessity, then Allah tabarak wa ta'ala stipulated this condition, غَيْرَ بَاغٍ وَلَا عَاد and I'll explain what it means, غير باغن and غير عاد. It means, عاد means that the person doesn't exceed his limits in this issue. It's زيادة في المقدار. That the person is what? He is not uh, using it for more than what he needs. Very good. For example, this will make it more clearer. A woman, a Muslim woman, she requires a doctor. And she couldn't find إلا رجل, a man. She can only find a man. It is not permissible for her to show her aura except that which is needed. If she has to show, for example, her leg, for example, her shin, he has to see, she can't take off her hijab and her niqab off and take her full of clothes off and come and sit. No. It's not permissible. She can only show him what? She only shows him the place which is necessary. She has to show only that. And the scholars, they say, The necessity, it is weighed by its need. So the woman has to stick to that. She has to show her cheek. She can't show any part of her body else. She can only, she, even the cheek, she just lifts it up like that. She can't show her eyes, uh, sorry, her face, her nose, her mouth. She can't show. She only shows him the place in which he needs to see. That's important. Some people, they believe he can see it. So they go all in and they say it's a necessity. And that isn't the case. The ayah said something very important, which is something that we need to give an eye to, inshallah ta'ala, which the ulama, they took an evidence from it, which is what the ayah says, فَمَنِ الضُّرَّ غَيْرَ بَاغٍ غَيْرَ بَاغٍ The scholars, they took from this word, غَيْرَ بَاغٍ a qa'ida. And the qa'ida that they took from it, the principle which is, أَنَّ الرُّخَسْ لَا تُنَاطُ بِالْمَعَاصِي This qa'ida is very important. Which is, ease, uh, ease, isn't given to a person who's sinning. For example, if a person travels and he embarks on a journey where he's going to go to commit zina. For example, a person is traveling from a Muslim country. He wants to come to the UK for prostitution and haram. You see? And it's example in the month of Ramadan. May Allah wa ta'ala protect us from that. Is that person allowed to take the ruling of what? Breaking his fast because he's a traveler. Is he allowed to? But he's embarking on a journey. The scholars, they took from this, ayah غير باغي No, it's not allowed. And so they said, any person who is given a rukhsa, rukhsa means what? A wajib is lifted from you because the sharia wants to take, e give you ease. It is not permitted for who? لا تناط بالمعاصي It is not stipulated. It is not with the person who is falling into a sin. Naam. Another question that arises here in this mas'ala, which is connected to this qa'idah, it's very important that we uh, give an eye to it, which is, um, if you got permitted something, if you got allowed, the sharia allowed you something due to necessity, something was allowed for you under, under necessity, okay? Does that thing nullify the rights of others? That question may not make sense, but with the example it makes sense. For example, if I said, a person, he had to use the wealth of somebody else. He's in the middle of the desert and he finds a camel and he's about to die. 
Okay? Are you with me? He fired the camel. And what did he do? He took it and he ate it. He's about to die. Does that nullify the right of the owner to request for his rights? Can, there, can he come and say, brother, my camel, you ate it. I want my camel. Is he allowed to or is it, is it permitted for, for him? It falls under this qaida. The jawab here, the answer to this, the scholars, they say it requires a look. It requires a look. Fihi tafsil. It's not a yes and no answer like that. They say that if it is, if the harm or the necessity occurred for him to have him to kill the animal because of the animal himself. For example, he was walking and the camel was about to attack him. Or the camel fell onto him and he couldn't remove the camel from himself. Or the camel came to attack him and he had no other choice except to shoot the camel and kill the animal. In that regard, what is the ruling? What is the ruling pertaining to that? If that is the case and he did it from that, then there is no demand on him. He doesn't have to give anything back in return. That necessity, the person, the, the owner cannot request. He cannot request for anything. Naam. He can't say that. He can't say, أَعْطِنِي قِيمَةَ jamal. Give me how much my camel is worth. He can't say that. لا يحق له. It's not right for him to say that. But if the person was hungry and was walking and the camel was minding his own business and so he walked towards the camel, he put the camel down on the ground and he slaughtered the camel, then that individual, the sharia permitted for him. And he's allowed to eat from it, no doubt. He's permitted to eat from it. But he has to pay back the owner. He has to give. He has to give the owner. And the ulama, they say, Necessity does not nullify the rights of others. Don't think it in its general form. The qaida doesn't mean in its general form. But it's that example and anything like it, it is. Another example would, would probably be like, for example, that if a person is on a, he's on a He's on a boat or on a ship. And there are people's products and things that are on the ocean and uh, the boat. And he fears that he's going to a life of death. Well, sinking is mushkila. I have to get rid of something. So he throws people's stuff out. Huh? Is it obligatory on him or not? The question the scholars they say is, if the stuff that the mata they fell on him whilst on the... Um, whilst on the ship, they fell onto him, and when they fell onto him, he was scared that it's going to cause him harm. So he deflected it, and they oh, they fell into the ocean. Some of them, huh? Then there's nothing on him. There's nothing on him. But if he threw them out, if he threw them out because they were sinking, then he has to pay. He has to what? Ah, uh, the harm isn't connected to the. The harm isn't connected to the bags and the luggage. The harm is connected to what? The harm is connected to the drowning. Whereas now the harm is connected to the bags that's causing him the death. That's what's going to cause him death. That doesn't mean he can't throw the stuff out. Both of them are necessity. He can get rid of the stuff. You see, wadah? But one there's a daman and one there, some are there, they're not. Some there are daman. Daman means he has to pay back on what he has done.